Hello everyone, welcome to the video for clue one of Flola Mystery Knit Along. I am Lauren Elkin, I am a knitwear designer, and hopefully you are ready to cast on for clue one. This video assumes that you have purchased the pattern for Flola and that you have already done your gauge swatch. If you haven't done your gauge swatch and you have questions about that, go ahead and watch the getting ready video and I'll link that below along with any other links I think that you'll need to work on this clue successfully. So I want to remind you about a few things as we jump in what you need to know for clue one. If you are working with a Lola's Choice kit for Flola, your main color, which you're working with in clue one, is the beige color in your kit. So make sure that you are casting on for clue one with the beige color. That is color 2331, in case you were wondering what the color code was. I call it beige. So you're casting on with the main color and starting to work clue one. And I know a few of you had some questions about if you got gauge or not. And I think for this clue, it's particularly important for you to know that both myself and the testers used about 18 to 19 grams of the tin linea off of a fresh ball. So these balls have about 50 grams on them, but I suggest before you start knitting that you take your label off of your skein and weigh your skein to get an idea of how much it weighs before you've done any knitting on it. And then as you work through clue one and you finish up clue one, you can weigh it again and you'll know exactly how much yarn you used for clue one. I do have a trick for you that I'll tell you a little later in this video that will help you kind of check your gauge part way through clue one to make sure that you are on track. So without further ado, let's jump in with the first few steps of clue one. Okay. Grab the needle that you worked on your gauge swatch with, and you're gonna go ahead and starting with the main color, give yourself about a six inch long tail and make a slip knot and put that slip knot onto your left hand needle, just like that. One of you is going to notice that I'm not working with the main color, I'm working with the sage green color. And the reason that I'm doing that is because on video, the main color isn't showing up well enough. So I just don't want that to confuse you. And it's why I've said that a few times, which is the main color for you. So now that you've got that slip knot on your needle, you're gonna start with the setup row and you're gonna make a yarn over, over your needle, and then you are going to knit one. And that is the setup row. You have a whopping two stitches on your needles. And now you are going to turn your work. And this is a right side row. And you're going to yarn over and knit two. Now at this point, if you want, I highly suggest marking the right side of your work with a stitch marker so that you know what the right side of your work is going to be. Now, I'm going very easy on you on clue one, and you are going to be continuing on making a yarn over at the beginning of the row and then working across all of the stitches on your needles until you get to 103 stitches. And what I want to do is just break down for you how to work that yarn over at the beginning of a row, both for somebody who holds their heart yarn in their left hand, like I do, and somebody who holds the yarn in their right hand. Sometimes those are called continental or English knitters. I like to just say in your left hand or in your right hand, because you don't get confused about which is which. So to make a yarn over at the beginning of a row, if you hold the yarn in your left hand, you'll see what I'm doing is just with my right hand needle, I'm going underneath the yarn to grab that yarn so it's coming over the needle and then I'm going ahead and working the next stitch and knitting across. If you split a stitch like I just did, back up and work it correctly. That will happen sometimes. I need to get a little tension on my yarn. That's what's not going well there. 
And now I'm knitting to the end of the row. Now I am going to hold the yarn in my right hand, which is a little bit awkward for me. I can do it, but it doesn't come as easily. And then I am going to show you what to do. So I'm going to, again, just bring that needle underneath the yarn, come into the first stitch on the left hand needle, wrap my yarn around and pull that through. So it's exactly the same technique. It's just a little bit different, whether you're holding the yarn in your left hand or in your right hand. You can see from this that I am clearly someone who holds the yarn in my left hand. So that is how you work a yarn over at the beginning of the row, whether you are holding the yarn in your right hand or your left hand, and you're going to be continuing on like this until you have 103 stitches on your needle. I clearly have less than that right now on my needle right here. And that is because you do not need to watch me knit until I get to that point. But I want to show you what happens next. When you get to 103 stitches, you are ending with a right side row. So your stitch marker will be facing you on the right hand side. And then what you're going to do is take a stitch saver and put that stitch saver onto the end of your needle, just kind of bring it down really tight and then slide your stitches along onto the stitch saver. If you find with this yarn that it's getting caught up on the stitch saver, you can see how I'm kind of flicking gently over the join with the stitch saver that helps it slide on there beautifully. If you don't have a stitch saver, you could just use a spare cable from an interchangeable needle set, or you can use a piece of scrap yarn. That's completely up to you. But for clue two, without giving too much away, you're gonna want this to be a little bit stiff, whatever you are putting those stitches onto. Now, are you somebody who is worried that you don't have gauge and you are going to use too much yarn in this clue? If you are, the trick for you is to start working clue one until you have about five inches on your needles and then stop and measure your gauge. Use this beginning part of clue one as your kind of second gauge swatch. Remember that your goal, if you're working with the yarn that came in the Lola's Choice kit, is to get about 20 stitches by 32 rows over four inches in stocking that in sorry in garter stitch unblocked. So that is your goal for gauge. You might find as you're knitting that you knit more loosely than you did when you were doing your gauge swatch. And if that is the case, if you kind of used a bigger needle size and you're wondering if that was correct, you might decide to go down a needle size, rip out what you did and start again. So you kind of have a moment to check yourself if you're unsure about that step. So I think I've covered everything that you need to know in this video for clue one. I will set up a thread in the Ravelry group for any questions. I'll also add all of this to the tips and tricks thread. I'll put both of those links below this video. Clue number two releases on Thursday, July 21st. So finish your clue number one by then. When clue number two comes out, you will have another video to help you with the next steps. Happy Flola knitting. I miss it, <laughs> the last bit was so bad. <laughs> Happy Flola knitting.